How good is digital room correction? There is a gnarly question for you. This question comes uh, from Mark in Columbus, Georgia. Ah, Columbus, Georgia. When I, uh, there's a long story that in my upcoming memoir, 99% True, uh, the book that I'm publishing, you, you'll read the great story of um, how I got thrown out of Europe for having my hair too long and threatening to burn down the armed forces network because they really pissed me off. And my punishment for that was being sent to Columbus, Georgia. I had, I had concocted this great deal with Giorgio Moroder uh, and Pete Bellotti and we were going to open a studio together and Terry and I uh, had, had rented this great estate in Munich and we were set to go and I got caught in the commanding officer got me down and he was like, stand at attention, asshole, <laughs> like that, and you're like, tick, 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 tick. and I, I, had, I was wearing a short hair wig to try and hide my long hair, and he goes, pull the wig off, you know, and I pull the wig off, my hair is sitting up in Bobby, but anyway, I got sent, as a punishment, I got sent to Columbus, Georgia, and put in charge of what we used to call the bedpan network, which is the, um, the hospital radio station. And I had six months to go. I mean, it was the stupidest thing. And uh, anyway, so uh, the Army and I didn't get along very well. Um, needless to say, I, I hope you have a chance to read my, my book. Um, I, I think you'll enjoy it. There's a lot of great stories like that in there. And it, I, I uh, got a job at a radio station in Columbus called WCLS. And WCLS was a rock and roll top 40 radio station at the time. Charlie Parrish owned it. And that's where I um, uh, acquired the name Christopher Robin, which is another story all in itself. So I, if, 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 you're, if you were around back then, you might have known of Christopher Robin at WCLS in Columbus, Georgia. And that was, that was me. Okay, so. Um, how do we get off on that? Oh, yeah. So Mark wanted to know, um, what do you think about digital room correction? Some swear by it. Others swear at it. Uh, I'm undecided. It seems to me that if you have a pristine digital or analog signal change chain, that processing it through another digital filter, possibly at a lower resolution, can't be a good thing. What do you think? I think it is a terribly difficult question. And I think there is so much controversy about it that it's really hard. So let's, let's, let's kind of break this down. Digital signal correction or room correction has been the holy grail for people for the longest time. And essentially, we know, well, here's what it does. Loudspeakers in a room are problematic because we can't live with them and we hardly can live with them. Loudspeakers in a room have reflections. You get it off the wall, off the floor, you know, what, whatever you got going. So, you know, if I'm playing loudspeakers in here, it's going to reverberate off the, the surfaces and the ceiling and the rug. And so I have to have very careful setup and it's never going to be perfect. It's not even going to be close. Okay. It just won't. So, and if I play my speakers outside, well, I won't have any reflections, but they'll also sound like crap. So it, 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 it's, yeah, it's this triple-edged sword. Somebody a long time ago, some smart guy, just said, hmm, if I take a microphone and I set it inside of my room and I play a certain known set of tones, I can see the distortion or the change between what I put in to what I'm getting out. And that change is due to the loudspeaker performance and the room. Now, if I see the change, I can make a change. I can correct for what I'm seeing, the anomalies that I see. And, that's, and if I do that digitally, when I have these big FIR filters, uh, with it finite infinite response filters, I can, I can take care of a lot of that and, and use the uh, correction techniques uh, available through digital signal processing to make those changes. Okay. And that's pretty good. And it, I've heard 
instances where it works very well. But there's a couple of things that are going on. Number one, where I place the microphone is where that digital room correction is going to work really well. If I move away from that microphone, it doesn't work so well. If I move, you know, way over here where things, uh, I'm getting close to a corner or I'm getting close to a wall, it doesn't work at all. So it only kind of works where the microphone was. Then you say, well, I could do a broad microphone sweep, put it over here. Yeah, and that sort of works, but not really. Also, rooms are huge in terms of what they can do, 20, 30 dB worth of change. So when you try and make those kind of changes in digital audio and demand that your speaker put out 20 dB more of this missing frequency and suck out 20 dB you know, less of that frequency, your speakers are all over the map and they're really struggling to get everything flattened out. So I think, it, it, I don't think it's impossible. I just think it's never been done very well, never to my satisfaction. Where it has been done well, and this is something that we'll be exploring in our new loudspeakers, digital room correction works great at low frequencies, right? As long as you're not trying to make up for the, 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 the dips where the bass gets sucked out, and if you just want to reduce the peaks, because you can get a lot of peaks and bumps and howls and rooms you know, for bass frequencies. So if you do that, which we will be using DSP in our speakers, it works pretty well. But the higher the frequency, like trying to get a tweeter that has quarter, quarter inch wavelengths to, to adjust to a room, that's really hard. So I'm not a fan of digital room correction for anything other than say below 100 hertz, 200 hertz. There, it works really well, as long as you're not trying to boost up uh, something that is, the room is sucking out. I hope that helps. Thanks. I'll talk to you tomorrow.